So the tradition says Na as such ought never be organized, but we may create service boards or committees directly responsible to those they serve. <clears throat> so this ninth instruction to set up no hierarchy of governance, but to take shared responsibility. So we can read this in our lives as saying, we are not going to, our, in our, our relationships are not going to be organizations. And the only thing that this is talking about when it's talking about organiz organized or being uh, an organization is the idea of a top-down kind of hierarchy, you know, the, um, the, the organizational chart. So in relationships, we're not going to have an organizational chart. We're, uh, we're going to take shared responsibility for what's got to be done. Now, this doesn't mean that we each don't have a task. Because this is like really important for us to, to come to this understanding. Yes, we can all fill in when we need to. But we know that we have some things that we're better at and that the people who we relate to, they have things that they're better at. Now, these are just temporary conditions, but that's what we're involved in. We're involved in this temporary life in this world that we're creating. And in that in that life, in this world, we each have pieces of talents, parts of the whole. And so in a relationship, a marriage or, you know, a friendship, a relationship in, a, in some organization to which we belong, we want to use our talents and abilities to the furtherance of the purpose. So then we would try to encourage people to contribute what they have, to contribute the things that they do best. And uh, that then would be uh, what's going to end up happening is synergy, the, 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 that, the, um, that the sum is going to be, uh, that the total that we get is going to be greater than the sum of the parts when we come together in that way. And so sometimes we may think that one person's contributions, their ability to contribute is more important than somebody else's, but that would be wrong thinking. It may be expedient for the moment. It may be what we need in the moment, but when we think about it in terms of overall, we remember what we talked about last week that everybody is equal. And the, this needs to be our mindset. Intellectually, <clears throat> it's, it's not that hard uh, to play with that idea of everybody being equal, but we find ourselves uh, going through life, making judgments where we judge ourselves as being more than or less than, and we judge others as being more than or less than. And that's just something that naturally kind of happens in the world. But what we want to do is when we find ourselves in that position is to just stop is to stop and say, wait a minute, let me think about that differently. Let me remember what I'm supposed to be practicing, that we're all equal. So then this next piece is that even though we all have different tasks, our talents put to work, to, be, to have shared responsibility for the outcome. So the other person is involved in a task, we want to be supportive of what they're doing. We want to trust them in what they're doing. We want to be helpful if we can. And then we want, but we also want to share in the responsibility, meaning that if there's anything else that we can do uh, to help, that we would step in. Now, the other piece about this responsibility in this particular principle is that if something goes wrong, I take responsibility for my part. I don't say, I was just trying to be helpful, as if that's an excuse for the mistake. Because this is the thing, a a to, to admit the mistake is to be free of it. And to not admit it, to, make, to cover it over by saying, oh yes, but I had the best of intentions. Yes, it's wonderful. And that's fine, that's great that you had the best of intentions. But a mistake was made. Let's just take responsibility for the mistake. And then move up, because see, here, 
In this spiritual practice, what we're talking about is a mistake is not an indelible stain upon your soul. It's not that big of a deal. It's just a mistake. But we take responsibility for it, and that clears the way for a solution to come out. To just stand on, just to, just to try to avoid that responsibility is not going to be helpful to anybody. So this is what we were doing in the meditation, is the idea of uh, being trustworthy. To be trustworthy means that people know we're steady. That people know that they can count on us uh, to do our part. Now, this is a tricky kind of a situation. Because sometimes, when we get into those situations where we're perhaps doing things we shouldn't be doing, which we've talked about in the past, people count on us to bail them out. People count on us to save them from their problems that are of their own making and really that they need to find a way to get out of without, you know, without our intercession. Uh, however, in this idea of being of service, there are things that we do, talents that we have. We want to give freely of those and we want people to know that they can count on us when we take on the project. In other words, when we take some kind of a service position, and not just in our fellowships, but wherever we may take it, at the first sign that things are not going the way we want, we don't resign. We don't, you know, we don't throw in the towel. We say we remember that the ultimate authority is a loving God, as it may express through our coming together. So I need to relax. No resignation, no quitting. This is what my, if you did my road ID for riding the bicycle, they said everybody needed to have a little, a, a little saying on it. So I've got my information on here, my name, where I'm from, Debbie's name and telephone number, no known allergies. I was gonna put no known allergies except opiates but there wasn't enough room to get all that stuff in there. My insurance company's on there, and then my little, my little saying, and it says, no complaints, no excuses, no quitting. I challenge the people at work one, uh, in one of my uh, little presentations at the beginning of the night, and I said, for 30 days, try to do this. Try to do it everywhere, but at least do it at work. No complaints, no excuses, no quitting. I, it's amazing. If you, if you actually put some focus on this and try to do it, you, you can't believe how many times you'll catch yourself complaining. And excuses abound. Right? This is what, where it came from was riding the bike. We're out riding the bike, and here's what people do. At the beginning of the ride, you'll hear two or three people say, oh, my legs are kind of sore today. Like, the, the, what they're doing is they're, they're thinking that maybe they're not going to be able to keep up. They look around the group and see how many fast riders they are, and they're, they're thinking, I might not be able to keep up today, so why wouldn't I be able to keep up? Oh, yeah, I, I rode really hard yesterday, so I may have a hard time keeping the pace today. We'll get in the middle of the, of the ride, and somebody will start complaining about gastrointestinal distress. Or something. We don't want to hear it. We don't want to hear it. And then the last thing covers both of the first things. No quitting. Even if you have a complaint, even if you have an excuse, don't quit. Fall over first. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, so, so this is the, is the idea when we're talking about being of service in the world. Is to say, let's get rid, because these things are just distractions. The excuses, the complaints just distractions from what it is that we really want to do. And the reason we want to do this is not because we want to be a slave to whatever relationship or organization that we're involved in. The reason we want to do it is because the promise of fulfillment lies in the service itself. The, 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 the ability to live a full life a fulfilled life lies in the service. So that's why we do it. And yes, it's not, but remember what it says. It says, service is for those that we serve. So our idea of being of service is not, yes, the result is going to be that we live a fulfilled life, but that's not the focus of it. The focus is we're giving 
to others. And the result, which we don't even have to worry about, is fulfillment. The result is that we live a life worth living. But the focus is on those that we serve. So here when it says that we're directly responsible to those we serve, now here it's talking about like in the fellowship, right? And I mean, originally that's how it's written to say that we're directly responsible to those we serve. And what that means is they get to question us. They get to ask, you know, why was this done? Why was that done? How, you know, what, they can ask questions about, you know, how could we do it better? And uh, then we don't get to say, well, if you weren't at the meeting, you don't get to ask. Because remember what we talked about at the beginning is that we all have different talents and abilities. All of us can't be everywhere. None of us can be everywhere. And so we didn't go to the meeting, but however, that whatever happened there, or what we weren't involved directly in that particular service, but if it was service for us, we can ask what happened. It's okay. And it's all right for me to answer. Now, now, we're not talking about being abused here, we're saying that people need to, to ask politely, but they have every right to ask and every right to disagree. To say, well, I don't think that that was a good idea because of thus and so. And because we remember this is service, it's, and once given, once given, it's a gift. It's not ours anymore. So we've given it, right? Now, so, so we don't have to have this personal ownership idea where if somebody does question it, we have to get defensive about what we did because we remembered that if there was a mistake, it was a mistake. I can admit freely that there was a mistake and we can go on. If it wasn't, if it wasn't, we, we'll talk about it and we'll see that it wasn't. The, the, the personal attachment to the service has to be released. Otherwise, it's not proper service. It doesn't belong to us anymore. This is why when we were writing the literature that we were told over and over again that once written and submitted, it does not belong to you anymore. It belongs to the fellowship. It's not yours. It's not your piece. It's ours. And so this then, that, see this, so, and we remember what the 12th step is talking about, is practice these principles in all our affairs. So yes, I'm directly responsible to those that I serve wherever it is that I'm serving. If I'm on the, on the hospital board, I'm directly responsible to those that I serve there. If I go to a recovery meeting, I'm directly responsible to those that I serve there. But it told me at the beginning what I read the, in, the, in the literature first said that the 12 steps prepare us for a life of service. So that means the whole life. And so then directly responsible to those I serve means everybody. I know it seems like a burden, but it's not. Because first of all, like I, I can't be everywhere at once anyway, so I'm not, I don't, <laughs> this is, I can remember some guy uh, saying one time about, um, about, uh, he says, uh, be, be careful about wanting to be a big shot in an anonymous fellowship. Because it's kind of hard to actually get fulfillment. And, 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 it, this, and so this idea of saying to give in that faceless, nameless way where you were not concerned about the recognition. Now, sometimes things happen, not in, in the fellowship they handle it differently, but in the world when we give service, people want to give us recognition for being of service. It would be rude to tell them no. So now we know for sure that the best service, really the most fulfilling, is that which we do in secret that nobody else knows about. I mean, it just just give it a try and you'll see. It's the best. And I can remember my sponsor telling me, he gave me the suggestion. He said, I'm not saying I did this. But he says, someday when you've got a little bit of money, take $50 in, in singles and walk around the mall putting them down in certain places and then go sit down and watch. 
as people find them. So that's, you know, I mean, that's pretty, that is, um, it's a lesson. And then once you see how that works, then you'll do it in different ways in different places. But so, but if you're in an organization and your service is recognized and they want to do something, you go along with that because that's part of being of service. And then what you do is you just say thank you. We just say thanks. Thanks for noticing. Thanks for saying so. Simple as that because it, it, this is this ego operating in the opposite is still ego operating. So when I'm saying, oh gosh, I really didn't do anything, that's just ego working in a different way. But it's the same thing. So I just say thank you. Thank you very much for seeing it. So the idea here is being a servant. Being a servant, not a governor. How did this idea get so out of whack? Uh, now, I would point out that in our fellowship, I see it. But also, I just see it in the world. Public servants get the idea that they're the boss somehow. It's not good for them, and it's not good for us. So when we're in this position to say, when I see a need and I want to be helpful, I want to just give of myself. My help may be accepted or it may not even be welcomed at all. So it's not up to me to make others take my help. So if they don't want it, you know, this is another thing. Oh yes, I'm so magnanimous. I'm going to give all this help to you. And you say, get out of my life. <laughs> I don't need it, don't want it. And you know what? Don't, they could be correct. Now, sometimes they may actually need the help and maybe in some kind of denial and they don't want to take it. But the fact of the matter is, it's not up to me to make that decision. So I don't want my service to be a manipulation or a, or a coercion. I, I want a, the service is freely given, freely given. I don't want to force people to do what I think is right. I'm not the boss of anyone. In my interactions with others, I want to attempt to remain humble, remembering that it is the presence of God that's in me that's guiding, but it's also in them. And to be, that we are equal, that we all have a gift to give, I stand ready. It says in here somewhere, I stand ready to serve, right? We stand ready to serve. So we are available for them, but we are not in charge of them. To avoid thinking of ourselves as superior or inferior to anyone else. To see that we all have authority in creating our own lives, but that we don't have authority to interfere in someone else's life. So we want to have, just let our service, we want to strive for our, to, to give service rather than governance. To be generous. This is really it. Um, not even thinking about it, not planning it. Sometimes, you know, I think at, at first, there's a lot of behaviors that we learn by doing them. And so at first, like, well, just think about when we have a bad habit that, we, that we'd like to be free of. The first thing that we do is we physically stop doing the thing, consciously, uh, through will, we stop doing it. And then we, we, we make a surrender so that we're looking for a strength to come to us, not just from ourselves, to be able to, to actually stay stopped. But we physically stop doing it. We make a decision that we're not going to do that. Any kind of behavior that we have in our life that we decide is destructive to us or to others, the first decision and the physical aspect of it is to say, I'm not doing that action anymore. I'm going to willfully not do that action. And so we start and, and we, you know, we say stuff like, don't pick up the first one. You know, it's, 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 you know when you get hit by a train, it's the, it's the engine that kills you, not the caboose. It's just this idea that, um, that you don't do the first thing that 
has a negative impact on yourself. Well, this is a decision not to act. Well, we know that through force of will, many of these habits, we can't just not do it through force of will. But we still have to have the force of will to say, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to pick up the first one. And then we look for help of some power greater than ourselves to, to give us the strength to do it. But so we, um, to give freely means I start giving. I just want to start giving. And sometimes it's hard because I think if I give, then I'm not going to have enough. And, you know, the first thing that comes to a lot of people's minds is money, but that's, that's a, kind of a side issue. Many times, I will tell you that people think that they're, are, they're more conservative and want to hold on to their money, but when really examined, what we find is that we want to hold on to our time more. That we really, when something involves investing some of our time, half of our day, or something like that. It's really like there's all kinds of reasons that start coming into the mind as to why we just can't do that. It's just, you know, yeah, when that friend calls and says he's moving. It's like, really? Oh, gosh. And then, I, you know, you get to this point where you say, I've done my time. <laughs> as far as moving goes, I've done my time. I'm, <laughs> I'm not doing any more. I'm selling my pickup truck. To give freely to life, to say, you know, every day to start off fresh and say it's a new day, a new life, open to, to all of these things that are going to happen and to think about, I'm going to give myself freely to life. And this means being open, not knowing what's going to happen, but to really giving ourselves freely to life is living fully. I mean, it's actually 